Hi, this is Alec Bolton, also known as Sandy, and this is Sandy's History. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the midterm exam. Um, so let's, uh, let's get started. Almost everybody did very well on the short answer section. So I will just uh, read them off. In what document were the words, all men created equal? And that's the Declaration of Independence. I think it's important for people to recognize the difference between the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Who's the person most closely associated with the phrase laissez-faire? And that is Adam Smith. Number three, U.S. Senators serve terms of six years. Members of the House of Representatives serve terms of two years. Number five, the period immediately following the Civil War is called the Reconstruction Era. Six, who became president in 1877, Rutherford B. Hayes. Seven, who was the failed Democratic and Populist candidate for president in 1896? That's one person, William Jennings Bryan. Eight, what do the Colfax, Louisiana, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Rosewood, Florida have in common? These were all communities that were in which the African American community was devastated by white racists who ran through the towns, killing, burning, and forcing African Americans to leave. The doctrine of separate but equal was issued by the Supreme Court in the case of Plessy versus Ferguson. 10, 11, and 12, three ways in which the African Americans were denied the vote during the, uh, late, eight, uh, during the late 19th century. Uh, poll taxes, literacy tests, the grandfather clause, whites only primary, that's four, fraud and intimidation. 13, the founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and the Black Star Steamship Line. And the answer to that is Marcus Garvey. The founder of Planned Parenthood who offered women advice on unwanted pregnancies, Margaret Sanger. 15, the founder of Hull House, a settlement house that held immigrants in Chicago, Jane Addams. What do Haymarket Square, Chicago, Homestead, Pennsylvania, and Pullman, Illinois have in common? They're all scenes of um, labor strife. I could have phrased that question a little bit better, but... 17, a fire at the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory in New York killed over 100 women. 18, name one woman who worked actively for women's suffrage. And uh, what I was looking for was in the uh, um, 20th century, that would be Carrie Chapman Catt is a good answer. Uh, Alice Paul, a good answer. If you're looking back earlier, Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, those would all be good answers. Who said, one ever feels his tunis? William Edward Burkhard, the voice, the voice. 20, who said, cast down your bucket where you are? It's Booker T. Washington. Who wrote the following words? I'm not going to read the whole quote. It is to the frontier that the American intellect owes its striking characteristics. Long, long quote. Frederick Jackson Turner. Name one proposal of the Populist Party that became law. And the, the two most obvious are uh, popular election of senators and a progressive income tax. 22 Socialist Party candidate for president in 1900, 1904, 1908, 1916, 1920 was Eugene Debs. Name two presidents who were... Um, in the progressive era. And uh, the best answer is uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, not Franklin, Teddy Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, and Woodrow Wilson. The assassination of Archduke, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, led to World War I. 25, the Versailles Treaty ending World War I called for a League of Nations. 26, the communist Vladimir Lenin came to power in Russia in 1917. 27, 
Henry Ford offered workers on his assembly line $5 for working eight hour day. 28. The Teapot Dome scandal marked the presidency of William Harding as one of the most corrupt in U.S. history. 29. John Scopes was found guilty of teaching evolution in Dayton, Tennessee. 30. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's plan to address the Great Depression was called the New Deal. 31. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's wife, Eleanor, helped establish the United Nations. So again, everybody, almost everybody did very well on the short answer section, as, uh, as to be expected. Let's, let's talk about the essays. Sig uh, discuss the significance of the presidential election of 1876. Uh, we've written on this before. Almost everybody did well. Um, uh, Rutherford B. Hayes uh, was elected uh, president over Samuel Tilden in a compromise since there was no definitive win winner in the Electoral College. The compromise had two parts. One was northern troops, federal troops, would be removed from the south in exchange for Rutherford B. Hayes, the Republican becoming president of the United States. The consequences of this, I think this is where um, some of you fell down, the consequences of this has been described as a betrayal of African Americans in the South who are now left uh, to face the violent white supremacists uh, of the South uh, on their own without any federal support and issued in a period of uh, disfranchisement of Jim Crow and of continuing racial violence, um, all uh, arguably a consequence of the failure of Reconstruction um, in 1876-1877. Compare the society, economics, and politics in the Gilded Age in the 1920s. Almost nobody, actually nobody wrote on this, but I think it's, it's worth discussing it. Um, in both cases, you had a dramatic expansion of the economy that made some people fabulously wealthy, uh, which helped to build up a middle class, but which also left many people um, in poverty. During the Gilded Age, uh, particularly factory workers, farmers, uh, in the 1920s, farmers were left out of the economic boom of the period. Uh, in both cases, there was a rise in um, fundamentalist um, activity uh, of nativism, of racism. Uh, that's uh, common throughout all of U.S. history, but um, it really peaked during the Gilded Age and the 1920s. In addition, in both periods, you had the government dominated by Republican presidents and conservative economic uh, policies of laissez-faire. The general feeling uh, at the time was that government had no responsibility to get involved in the economy uh, of the nation, that the economy um, operated as if by an invisible hand of uh, laws of supply and demand in which the best outcome would naturally evolve as long as the government uh, refrained from uh, getting involved in the economy. Um, this was basically a conservative pro-business philosophy which led to uh, cutting taxes on the wealthy, um, cutting government spending. Um, the general feeling was that the government was one thing, society was another, economics was something else, um, and that these two should stay separate. Uh, as we know, in the Gilded Age, um, this led to increased social tensions, which I think were ultimately resolved to a large degree by the reforms of the progressive period. Not completely, obviously, uh, but the reforms of the progressive era addressed many of the continuing issues. Um, the, the way I see much of history is it you can imagine three intersecting inter, intersecting wheels or cogs. Uh, you have the economy on the one hand, uh, politics on the other, 
society on the other. And ideally, these three wheels, these three intersecting gears work together harmoniously to shape good outcomes. Every now and then, one of them gets out of whack. The economy gets too big, so their society has changes, their political changes, things get out of work, whack, and things need to be adjusted. We see that in the progressive period when there was an attempt to, uh, to some degree, successful attempt to get all three wheels working uh, together. In the case of the 1920s, uh, there was no easy, relatively easy solution. There was an economic house of cards that came about because of uh, government um, complete lack of regulation of the stock market and of the economy in general. And the whole house of cards collapsed in the great crash of 1929, leading to the Depression. So all of these characteristics, one of the reasons I thought this was an interesting question was, again, uh, we come back to the question of relevance. Um, I think many of these issues, uh, a pro-business, uh, conservative, Republican economic policy uh, is um, being continued today. Um, and I think we are beginning to see some of the disastrous results of that in uh, 2020. So what else do we have here? Next question, discuss the significance of World War I. A big question, um, where to start? First of all, um, England, France, with the United States aid, helped to defeat um, Germany and Austria-Hungary um, in World War I. Um, there were many millions of people who died. Uh, figures range from 20 million to 50 million in Europe. The United States, on the other hand, only lost about 50,000 men in the conflict. As a result of this, the European economies were devastated, but the U.S. economy uh, entered into a, a, a spurt uh, which led to great economic prosperity that we just talked about in the 1920s. The United States shifted from becoming a debtor nation before the war to a creditor nation after the war. It was really the world um, economic powerhouse after World War I. Also um, important, the flu epidemic of 1918, a direct consequence of the war, swept through uh, the world, killing maybe 100 million people. I think that has a lot of resonance uh, to us today living in 2020. Um, many of you discussed the Versailles uh, Peace Treaty, which led to um, harsh consequences for the defeated nation of Germany. Uh, Germany was forced to sign a uh, war guilt clause, accepting guilt for the war, and also promised to pay back reparations for damages of the war. These led to resentments in Germany, which uh, many people have seen as helping to uh, be a significant cause of World War II. Finally, and this is something that uh, a lot of people missed, but which I thought was very important, was that uh, during the war, uh, Russia was basically defeated and uh, a new regime came into power in Russia, uh, led by Vladimir Lenin, who established a communist economic social system in Russia, which would have uh, enormous consequences. One thing that I think is worth pointing out about this is that Russia has had in the 20th century two major revolutions. The first one in 1917 during World War I, and then at the end of the Cold War, 1989, 1991, that time period, uh, Russia again went through a major transition in government. Um, but in both cases, uh, uh, this uh, reifies the old adage, the more things change, the more things stay the same. In both cases, the ultimate result was a totalitarian, oligarchic government. The czars were replaced by uh, the communists, uh, the communists by, uh, ultimately by uh, Vladimir Putin, totalitarian, oligarchic, 
cryptocracy, I think would be a, a correct word for it. So I think this is uh, interesting uh, to note by those who advocate revolution. Oftentimes the consequences of revolution um, are not what you expect. Okay, so what is the, uh, the fourth? Discuss the significance of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Um, Roosevelt is uh, a hero to liberals such as myself. Um, his New Deal policies uh, were aimed at relief, recovery, and reform uh, during the Great Depression. And I think these policies made a substantial contribution to ultimately lifting the United States out of the Great Depression. Uh, some people say that he ended the Great Depression. I think ultimately the Great Depression was only finally ended by, the, uh, by World War II, by the industrialization and the economic revival that came about as a result of World War II. <laughs> However, his policies um, did bring relief to many Americans um, and he helped to reform uh, American politics and economic, economics through a variety of mechanisms of experimentation. I think oftentimes people get, get this wrong. Um, he, was, he came to, into office with no specific ideology. Uh, he didn't have any philosophy of government or the economy. But he tried one thing and then he tried another uh, until finally, finally find some solutions that worked. In the process, he created a number of agencies and passed a number of acts, sometimes which are called the alphabet agencies, the Agricultural Adjustment Act, AAA, the Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, Works Projects Administration, WPA, I could go on and on, FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Um, I think one of the most important of these is the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, which brought electricity to large parts of rural America. And also, uh, very importantly, the Social Security Act. Uh, if you don't know much about the Social Security Act, ask your grandparents what they think of Social Security. Um, I'm at a stage in life where uh, I'm getting a check from the U.S. government um, every month, which I appreciate very much. Thank you, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, what else can we say about Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Again, not an ideological president. Um, I think it can be said about Franklin Delano Roosevelt that he saved capitalism from itself. Capitalism, the economy, unregulated, leads to monopolies, leads to uh, corruption. Um, I think finally the government and uh, American citizens in general recognized the need for government to step in and help uh, those people who have been distressed by economic issues today by the coronavirus epidemic, government has an important role to play. Government cannot just keep hands off uh, the economy, cannot uh, stand idly by while millions of people are, uh, are, are suffering. Um, so I think that covers it. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, the next video we're going to start talking about presidents of the United States, uh, and we will have a surprise guest. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching.